Hi tribe, welcome back to my channel. So today tribe, as I promised, I will be doing money lessons I have learned from the Bible. So my take on some of the verses and some of the verses that I love. And this relates directly to personal finance. Okay, so the first one is... So what I'll be doing, I'll be reading the, the, the Bible verse, then sort of doing my interpretation on it, okay? So the first one is Genesis um, 41 from about verse 29, okay? And it says, Behold, seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in the land of Egypt will be forgotten, and the famine will be devastating to the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered since the famine that follows will be so severe. Ah, guys, the Bible is so hectic sometimes. But for me, this lesson, right, what I get from this. So actually, I would encourage you to go read the whole chapter after that because then it talks about how they plant. And which brings me to my lesson is that God wants us to plan. When it comes to our finances, we need to plan. And I mean, on this channel, I'll always talk about, you know, planning your finances, making sure that you invest, making sure that you save. And this principle talks to that exactly, that there are times of famine, there are times of abundance. And we're actually laughing with Pam saying that, you know, there's a saying that the good thing is nothing lasts forever. And the bad thing is nothing lasts forever. <laughs> And I find that in every situation, whether you are in a position of abundance, people think that the gravy train will keep on going. And when people are struggling, they think that that is their portion. And neither of those things are true. Nothing is constant. Things are forever changing. And that is why you need to plan. And if you read further, you will see that Joseph said, OK, the famine is coming. Now we have abundance. What are we going to do now that we do have abundance? We're going to start saving. In this case, it was crop, it was food, making sure that they have reserve for the next seven years. Imagine, imagine for seven years you have abundance and you know that famine is coming for the next seven years, meaning that whatever you have right now, you have to put away enough so that for the seven years of famine, you have enough. And that's exactly what he did through planning and wisdom. Through planning and wisdom, you too can do that. But equally, even if you're in a position of lack right now, keep on doing what you need to do. Plan as well. You know, oftentimes when you are in a place of lack, you feel like, but what am I planning for? Because plan, 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 and God will reward your effort. Which brings me to my next, this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite um, verses or chapters in the bible okay so this is from second kings chapter four it's called the widow's olive oil okay please do entertain me as i read the full thing because i think if i leave out some parts it won't be <clears throat> it won't have that depth all right so the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to elisha your servant my husband is dead and you know that he revered the lord but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. So already it can tell you that when you have debt, what are you? Hmm? It can tell you already when you have debt, you are a slave. All right. And remember, yes, we talk about good debt and bad debt. Not all debt is horrible, but there is some debt really that enslaves you. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? What do you already have right now? Oftentimes we look at outside. We say, oh, but I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't speak well. I don't, um, I'm not smart enough. Or I don't look a certain way. Hey, you already have everything inside of you to succeed. God made you this way for a reason. Everything, everything is inside of you to succeed. Okay. So she replies, your servant has nothing there at all. Hey. Or she's like, I have nothing. I cannot little, right? She said, except a small jar of olive oil. And all the time, you know, I want to say it in my language, you make small what you have, right? The gifts and everything that God has put in us. We think, ah, oh, but you know, I'm not that great, right? So she says, like, I don't have anything, but I have this small thing, right? Then Elisha said, 
go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars don't ask for just a few don't ask for small things right but i actually want to go back to them so the prophet also said go he didn't just say oh okay it will come down from heaven what did she have to do put in effort herself she it just didn't come down oh i don't have anything oh i'm crying oh you know things are so bad uh, he said okay you have to go do some work right go and ask and don't just ask for a few don't go there and ask for a two because what do we do oftentimes we are afraid to ask we are like oh what will people think you know you're afraid to put yourself out there hey, put yourself out there you know one of the things that i talk about is a no to you should be like ah okay so what i mean pam knows i am not afraid to approach anyone the worst thing you can say is no so what okay so it continues then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons i want to read that again then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons what do we do in the world of social media we show everything absolutely everything even before the blessing is done you start talking about things you start blabbering on and really sometimes we ruin our own blessings because we are here just telling everyone everything god sometimes wants you and your close knit people to go behind and pray to him and be with him right so don't talk about everything to everyone not everyone is for you right and sometimes the devil will steal from you because here you are nah, nah, nah. zip it go inside and shut the door and be with god will be with christ pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled put it to one side right she left him and shut the door behind and her sons they brought the jars to her and she kept pouring she kept pouring when all the jars were full she said to her son bring me another one but he replied there is not a jar left then the oil stopped flowing right she said the son said he said give me more give me more because they've been pouring and remember she went around her village to get as many jars as possible and now she, they kept on pouring from that small thing that she that small thing that she thought oh no it's not much now she's kept on pouring in every jar in every jar possible then she asked for a son hey give me one more he says there is not a jar left right then the oil stopped so for me what also this says is that our blessings what we ask for from god there has to be a vessel for it you cannot ask God and be sitting at home and watching Netflix the whole day. What is your vessel? Are you here every day doing videos? Are you here every day putting yourself out there, sending your proposals? Are you here every day opening up your store? Are you here every day, you, you know, Pam, doing people's hair, doing your PA work? You, you, you are saying, God, I'm expanding my vessel so that the blessings, God will bless you. He will. That's, that's, that's guarantee. How? We don't know right but what i know for sure is that god will bless you so your vessel has to be there you can't say bless me then what is what is it gonna bless you watching netflix all day the, uh, actually before we go anyway don't come at me like ah oh, my fellow says you must not no i watch netflix sometimes also it's time to relax it's 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 good to relax but you cannot ask for blessings and always be on relaxed mode yeah. <laughs> you have to put in the effort okay she went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. And you, you and your sons can live on what is left. So very important again. He just didn't say, okay, now you have oil, sit with it. What are you going to do with the, all that oil? No, you have to go again out in the world, serving people, making sure that you do your work, right? He just didn't sit there. She still had to do the work so that she can pay off her debts. Sometimes um, I get people, part of my tribe, who ask me, oh, I have all this debt, what do I do? You know what you need to do. You know, you know you need to pay off your debts. You know that you need to make an extra income. You know you need to budget. 
you know, the tools and the, 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 the things are there. You know that you need to pay off your debt. Sometimes people want you to come and wave a magic wand and it will No, even in the Bible, she had to go and sell. She just didn't sit there and be like, oh, well, hopefully, you know, people will know that I have the oil, then they'll come. No, you have to get off your butt and do the work, right? And pay your debts, right? So God doesn't want us to have debt, you know? And you and your sons can live on what is left. So I don't think I need to explain this because I think I've been explaining it as I go along. But this is such a beautiful, beautiful scripture. All right. So which moves me to the third one, right? Let me open it. So now you have the money, right? Now you have the money. Now you're okay. Now you are. Things are moving for you, right? Then Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much hey this one even hits me you know Ugh, i'm just like ah <laughs> and for me this really talks about habits right if you have good habits you will do the right thing whether you have small or big that's just who you are right and also habits can be learned just because you haven't done something doesn't mean you're not going to be it right um you can always change but if you're waiting for oh when one day when i have this mm -hmm. it never works and what am i talking about when we talk about money principles we even on this channel i always talk about even if you are earning five thousand right now even if you're earning ten thousand even if you're earning three thousand you need to be smart you need to be you need to have wisdom when it comes to managing money not just book smart you need to have wisdom right so with the little that you have you have to be in the habit of putting money away remember even that little can even be taken away because you do not do it right right so if you're earning three thousand make sure that 100 rent you put away just get into the habit because People say, oh, I earn little right now, but one day mm -hmm. when I am earning 100,000, 2 million, 5 million, then I'll start doing the right thing. How will you do that? How will you? Because you are not in the habit of doing that. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that is like to put away 100 rand. Mm -hmm. You have never done it. Okay? So learn good habits. Even if you are in your late 30s and you have never done it, you can still do it. All right? Then the last one is a little bit cheeky because, of course, I had to go there. <laughs> I had to go there, you know. Now you're doing the right thing. You have good habits. You've planned. You know, um, you've pra you're practicing all the principles. Then this I've seen quite a few times. And this is something I, I, I did like a, a TikTok thing and in, in, uh, Instagram reel where someone was saying, you know what, they're always bailing out their siblings or... Um, their loved ones out of debt because you know they love them so much hey, hey don't be an enabler you are not here to be an enabler you are part of the problem if you keep on bailing people out over and over again and which brings me to proverbs 22 right it says do not be among those who give pledges involving themselves in others finances so i mean the bible says tells you you're involving yourself why must you involve yourself or among those who become guarantors of others' debts. If you have nothing with which to pay another, another's debt when he defaults, why should his creditor not take the bid from under you? Hmm? So please don't be here taking on people's debt. People must solve their own stuff. Yes, you know, I was actually telling Pam that, you know what, there's scenarios for sure, right, that are okay to help people. So, for example, I, I, and I only say this, with my siblings, I put my life on it, right? I know that they are trustworthy. I know their character. And I know if they're in trouble, and I mean, it's a genuine thing, right? I know that I can help, and I know I'll get my money back. I know for sure. I don't even, it's not even a question. I'm not even, you know. But also, you need to look at the character of a person, when it comes to money, there's more to this thing than just the hard stuff. It's about character. It's about having wisdom. It's about having discernment. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's the most important thing when it comes to money and life. But asking God for discernment to manage your money well, asking God to reveal people's characters even when it comes to money, that's very important. You can't be giving money to every Tom, Dick and Harry. You have to be aware of these things. And that's just my take on some of the Bible verses. Um, and I hope it helps you in some way and helps you think, see things a little bit differently. I will be doing this maybe once every two months where I read from the Bible uh, some of the things that we can learn. Um, I think especially as Christians, there are so many good principles we can learn um, that can help us to manage our money better. All right, so also I want to hear from you. What are some of the verses that you absolutely love that talk about money or that have the principles of learning about personal finance and let me know in the comments and i will see you soon of course and remember to like and subscribe and do the whole thing send it to your friends send it to your mom we're talking about jesus here <laughs> all right bye for now